getting on to the three as I speak currently. Now on the three, see the sign there. We are in the Cascade Mountain Range and the Cascade Mountain Range is a part of Cascade Volcanic Arc, which goes all the way from California up to BC. We're in the northern part of that volcanic arc. And uh, Mount Baker is probably the most well-known volcano uh, around this area. Uh, Mount Meager as well at Whistler. Mount Garibaldi as well, uh, which is also part of the, that's the Garibaldi volcanic belt, but uh, it's in the Cascade uh, volcanic arc. And it's a strata volcano, which basically means it's got really steep sides and they go really high up and when they erupt, they erupt. And then you got um, a couple other different types of volcanoes, some kind of interspersed throughout the area. There's shield volcanoes, which are like, it's like a hill, basically like a little, like a miniature volcano with a hill on it, pretty much. And then you got lava domes, which is like, it's basically a big cauldron and the lava inside is so viscous that it won't, it won't move out of the cauldron. So it basically sits in that cauldron and then you got cinder cones, which is basically just, it's a vent, poofs out lava once, and then it, that's it, doesn't do it anymore. It's usually kind of a buildup of ash and stuff. That's, those are like the four types of volcanoes you'll see around here. We've got all of them in BC, about every single type. And the whole reason this area is volcanic in the first place is because right along the coast, just past Vancouver Island, you've got a whole series of tectonic plates. So you've got the Pacific plate, and then you've got the Juan de Fuca plate, the Explorer plate. There's a series of faults and ridges that run all along these, and these move. And the Pacific plate will do this thing called subduction, where it actually pushes underneath the North American tectonic plate, and it basically superheats the water because of the mass amount of pressure. So when the when the plate pushes down into the ocean, it pushes water and rock and everything, and because of the forces involved, it's such a massive amount of pressure that it heats up. When you, when you pressurize something, it, it heats. It's called heat of compression. And so this superheats uh, all the water and turns it into hydrothermal fluid, which is we'll go into later, which is why ore deposits are formed and how they're formed. But basically, the whole reason that we get volcanoes here is this plate is pushing on the North American plate, which we live on, and it causes a whole bunch of rifts volcanoes form, lava, and then there's chambers, chambers form within those mountains, and then the gas is built up and it's look, that's, we're going through the Skagit Bluffs currently, and as you can see, it's quite precipitous and steep. So the three has had a long history. It started out as a Furbrigade trail for the Hudson's Bay Company in like the 1840s. Then in the 1860s, Edgar Dudney, who, you know, Dudney Trunk Road, the Dudney Trail. Uh, he surveyed the Dudney Trail in the 1860s. And then the railway came through in the uh, around the 1900s. And then the road was finally built in the late 40s. But uh, just like, as you can see how, you know, rough this terrain is, it's, they had a huge problem building a road like uh, through here. They, even the railway, they, they were three routes. They were gonna go the Culpehalla route. Uh, which they ended up going at the Kettle Valley Railway through uh, Brookmere, all the way down through uh, the Tulamine River uh, into Princeton. Or there was the Railroad Pass route, which was a tunnel through the Railroad Pass mountain. Then there was the road, basically. A road uh, uh, that they surveyed in like 1915, but uh, it was just it was too hard to build at the time, so they didn't end up building it. So. Uh, there wasn't really a need because the railway was running and they had other roads, but eventually, come in the late 40s, they built this road. So, the crow's nest is fairly new though. That's had a fairly new incarnation. When they went to go get the railroad surveyed, it was actually uh, Edgar Dudney that surveyed it and he said he didn't like it. He said that he would have rather it just built a train from Merritt down to Princeton and go that way. Then. They had other ideas, so, uh, but it was thanks to Dudney pretty much that this route exists. And before that, it was just a bush trail for Fermat. Yeah. So over there, that's Copper Mountain. That's the famous copper mine. Uh, 1897, it was soaked by a name, by the guy of the name called Volcanic Brown. And he, uh, he sold it and made millions off of it and then, you know, lost it all in a gambling house. 
But uh, yeah, that's Copper Mountain. Been finding it ever since. Just past Princeton, or just in Princeton now, or just passing through Princeton. Um, kind of an interesting town, Princeton. It's got a lot of history to it. It's a four corner town. So to the north, you've got the 5A, which takes you up to Kamloops, which was the original wagon road from Kamloops to Princeton back in the day. Over on the west side, you got northwest, you've got the Tulamine, Colmont, Lakeburn, there's a big coal mine over there. Tulamine River is a platinum bearing, platinum and gold bearing river, one of the few in the world. To the east, you've got Headley, which is we're gonna stop in, we'll more on that later, all the way to Soyuz. And in the south, you got the road to Vancouver. So no matter which way you go in Princeton, you've basically got somewhere to go. And it's a big gold mining town, not in Princeton itself, but all around Princeton on the Tulamine and the Similkameen. Um, it's also, it's a confluence of the Similkameen and the Tulamine. So the Tulamine's a tributary of the Similkameen and it feeds the uh, Similkameen from the Northwest. So we're just passing through Princeton and we're heading over to Headley and we're gonna stop in Headley quickly and check out the gold mining museum, which was there back in the day. There was a big gold mine there, the nickel plate mine. There's a funny story behind that, but be more on that later. So we're just outside Headley. Um, see the sign here? Headley was a big gold mining town, the nickel plate mine. Just a little bit past Headley going towards Asoyus. We're in the Similkameen Valley. So you can kind of see over there, there's striations on the rocks up there. It's pretty, pretty cool. So we're in Headley now at the Headley Museum. There's a little uh, park across the street here. You can see there's an old barber shop. Miner's cabin. I think it's a doghouse actually too. Nice wooden doghouse. The inside, this is what these old boys would have worked in, or lived in while they were working. The old stove. Pots and pans. Jugs for the hooch. Hooch jugs. And they just look at that they use for the uh, the roof. Just timber, log poles, little cart. Yeah, that's an outhouse, yep. Yeah. Old drag bucket. Oh, seen better days. Little boys there, riding a skip up. Oh, the drill. Would he use these for core samples or drilling? Putting charges in? Mast and everything, that's pretty cool actually. Winches. Oh, uh, how's it going, man? I just like the gizmos. I just, no, <laughs> my, well, I recognized that one. I did. I thought he was doing some kind of a seismic thing. Yeah, I just get some <laughs> no, video no. of this stuff because it's so, <laughs> so fascinating here. Yeah. Stoper drill. So they use that for drilling up vertically, creating stopes, right? Yeah. Drifter. So you'd have the, the sinker would be for obviously sinking holes in the ground. The drifters for drilling sideways, and the stopers for drilling up. It was an old rocker box here. That sit on a, sits on a like a saddle. You take that handle and you move it, shake it back and forth, run water, and it acts like a sluice box. So it's when you don't have enough water and you need to sluice, rocker box. Oh. There is nothing like this in North America. Uh, somebody yesterday, actually I had a tourist in yesterday, and he said it should be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I don't know if a UNESCO is interested in a little <laughs> dinky-ass town like Headley, but anyhow. So the bottom two buildings here, these were the mine offices. 
these were bunk houses where the bachelor officers lit or bachelors lived. They would walk up these 520 stairs daily to get to the cafeteria up top, and that would probably they get lunch for uh, for the day too, and then go back home at night. Now this was a gold mine. It was a vein mine. And so when they discovered gold, they found a little bit lying around up top and realized it was down down in that mountain. So they drill down, they do a uh, drill down, get a core sample. So they go down, bring up the core sample. Oh, there's the gold. It's sitting at 2,000 feet. Dr blast down to the 2,000 foot wow. level, the 2,000 foot level, and start following it wherever the vein goes. So the vein is, the mountain is full of tunnels, all following the vein. There are 60, six zero miles of tunnel in that mountain. That's incredible. It's, it's closed, it's yeah. under the care of the Upper uh, Civil Community Indian Band. It's closed to public usage, but people occasionally go in there yeah. and photograph themselves going through the tunnels. Just one day one of them is gonna fall, fall into a 35 foot deep glory hole, never be seen again. So once they could get them out, I say they got them out and go gold out of the mountains, they would bring it down the tram line. Now that break in the trees, that's where the tram line was. Mm -hmm. This is what the tram line was. This is a piece of the tram line here. Right. Down, down, down. Headley's way down in the valley there. So they would bring the gold worm down to the, tr the, the mill. So on the hillside over there, you can see a few foundations. Oh, yeah. Right. That was the up there. Yeah, yeah. This is what the scamp mill looked like. Now this, from the coast, you might have seen Britannia Beach. Britannia, it's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. the same, same kind of type deal. of building, uh, except they didn't take out gold like we did. We were the largest gold mine in Canada and probably in the top five of North America. So once they got the ore down to the mill, they had, uh, they would call it the, West, the reason it was called the stamp mill. They dumped the ore in big, huge buckets and they'd have stamps that are shaped like an upside down mushroom. And the stem part of the mushroom would go up into a machine and it would start pounding on the door. Pum, 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 pum. Day and night, 24 hours a day, 365 years, 50 years. Never closed down for Christmas, Easter, your mom's birthday, nothing. No reason to close down. Even the war shut them down because uh, they needed that gold. gold yeah. yeah, you yeah. need the gold for the war. So that yeah. they get the gold, they, in the early years, they would make it into gold bars. So we had a, the Great Northern Railway came in. The railway went uh, from the valley, Fraser Valley to... Uh, Merritt, no, from <laughs> no, part from there to Spence's Bridge, cross to Merritt, down to Princeton, over to Headley. It was on the other side of the okay. hill, the river. We would cross the river, go past the site, pick up all the gold, the ore, and they've also got nickel, copper, and silver as a side effect because those four ores hang out together. They would take it down a couple of miles, back across the river, down to Midway the town of Midway, and then down to the United States. The, the, the first, uh, the biggest claim up there was owned by a Montana uh, company. The, bo the big shot was going through some days to New Westminster, uh, back in the day when it was Miss New Westminster was the, the high. And he saw this gold ore and he kind of went, holy crap, look at that good stuff. Offered the two prospectors $60,000 each, that was 1899. Well, by your claims, the prospector said, yeah, because all they had was a pick and a shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah they're not getting it out. And then that made it, then that's when it started being my Montana. And then by 1900, everybody and their dog knew there was gold here, and they were up, up here trying to get a piece of it. So this is, this is the road, just outside of town. You had the truck for it, too. Just outside of town, uh, about a mile and a half out, there's a road. It goes off to your left. There's you going towards Caramias. It goes off to your left. It's called the Nickel Plate, Headley Nickel Plate Road. Now, this is the Highway 3 down here. This is taken in 1940. So, <laughs> Headley's back behind here. So you go up the mountain just like this, basically. Pretty rough this time of the year. Through the bluff, this is a little wider through here. It goes up to the top. It goes then, it goes past Apex Mountain Ski Resort. And then you go down the mountain, it pops right down into Penticton, the bypass in Penticton. Tim Horton's at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> Got up Tim Horton's. Wow. So uh, okay. to give you an idea of this mile-long tram line, you can see this. Now, th when it hits the horizon here, there's, it still goes on here. And then you've got the double tracks. So and this part of it, it's down here. So there's a big gap in here, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And somebody just pointed me out yesterday, and he says, was that the moon that disappeared? I said, yeah. Can you see Luke Skywalker? These five pictures here, they were taken as they were building the, the, the mine buildings. They started building them in... 
I am September of 1935. Mm -hmm. They finished in April of 1936. Wow. They're at 5,000 feet up there and there's a ski resort up there. They get snow. I've never seen it not snow and that's how, in fact, in October, that's how we tell winter's coming because you can see snow on the roof. Mm -hmm. But now this is what they looked like before they were named a historical site and, um, and were re revitalized. So they were uh, one more year and they probably would have all been timber in everybody's backyard. So there's the, the being saved. It's amazing they've survived this long, eh? Yeah, well here they are building in 1935 in October. This guy was working nine to ten hours every day. Oh yeah, that's all the log, yeah. The, the, Except yeah, the for this log. one guy here, Mr. Boyer. He's working away in it, but it must have started snowing at the 10th of October because I can see him standing. That's, yeah, that's fascinating. You can see all the different <laughs> hours of uh, yeah. all, the all the different days they all worked. Yeah, but you see the last day he worked and I, I, he never came back on that month anyhow. And I can see he was standing on there and it just started the first snowfall of the season. He's going, Had enough, eh? Going, <laughs> God, that's snowing. Again? <laughs> oh no, that's a long way down. This is, these are the stamps here. Oh yeah, for and the there they are crushing the order. Right? Tuck yeah, tucked yeah. in there into that machine so they could go up and down. Did they do the hose reel racing here? Hose reel racing? They would like to fire, fire hoses? Yeah, fire no. hoses. Because if ours was a working fire hose and they oh, yeah. around with yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I know in the, Kootenai, in the Kootenais they did that. They do uh, like the fire hose I, I've races. been here 50 years next year. When I first moved here, that was the fire department. A big couple of wheels with a hose. And when the fire alarm went off, they would all be running down with the hose yep, to get yep, to the yep, fire. Yeah, I saw the old pictures and then, of it. And then yeah. as we got more civilized and more city people moved in, they said, well, you can't use that. And then, of course, the insurance company goes, that's not a fire that's department. Not gonna, no, that's not a fire department. So now we have a fire department with a very nice fire truck, and the hose is attached to the water board office, so everybody can see what the old days look like. This is the, the town site. No, I was telling you about the town site. Yeah. There's the town site. You can see it better in the trees. Um, Oh. Yeah, so the, the, this area that they covered, so most of the, the mountain this way was your town site. Any photos like this, all these big, huge photos like this you see on walls and stuff? Yeah. He took his... his it, very his, early his, panorama, eh? Yeah. It's wow. 1936. That's incredible. Yeah. And look at the, 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 how sharp it is. Yeah. yeah. Nice all camera this, too, eh? And they, uh, wow. well, God, know what, God knows what he had. What they were using, yeah. The pictures like that. Wow. That's my grandfather-in-law, my husband's oh, grandfather. Oh, really? Wow. He was a first aid attendant at the mill. My late husband was born up there at the town site. His dad was a blaster and his granddad was a blaster. Right. So cool. So oh. the whole family. Yeah, the whole family. So their family. Yeah. So I yeah. listened to all the stories they would tell. Wow. So I could do well, they, were, they told me all the good juicy stories. But we had, we've had now, Heather's had some movies made here. And uh, oh, we had nice. a Burt Reynolds movie, as we're a small town in Colorado. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We had over there at the end, we had the Pledge, we were a small town in Nevada. Oh, wow. Well, and then in here, we had the Andromeda oh, You had Nicholson Street. here? Nicholson was here. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then we had, uh, we played, played a small town in Utah. The Actually, the most of the movie did not take place. There's, there's Nicholson right there waiting, right in front of the corner oh, yeah. store. <laughs> 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 that's exactly. insane. Yeah, wow. and he's just sitting out there in the streets and... 2000. Yeah, yeah that's they, old they, Jack. There's a, yeah. play, a scene in, in, the, in the story where there, there's a big parade going down Main Street and he's chasing the bad guy. The parade, oh, the whole parade thing was done here. We had to get shut down Main Street. For <laughs> and then the end of it, it takes place in Little Wet. Yeah. Uh, so, and I don't know where the beginning part was. Just passing through Carameas. Um, coming into a bit of a change here at the topography and the climate. So, we were in like the coastal mountains and kind of transitionatory period, but now we're going to straight up head into foothills and desert, or highlands, or by the more correct term. So, and the Soyuz uh, is considered a finger of the great North American desert. And actually, in my last video of uh, Farwell Canyon, that is also that whole area, Williams Lake, that Clinton, Cache Creek, Kamloops, that's all. That's all considered part of it, but we're basically kind of in the lower echelon now on a Soyuz. There's actually a desert visitor center. You can go see all the desert animals and stuff, and the shrubs and stuff that exists in the desert. 